3 million dollars in annual revenue renting out RVs? Are you kidding me? Sometimes the best ideas are right in front of you and they don't take a whole lot of creativity to pull off. In this video, I take a look at Northwest Adventure Rentals, a Seattle-based company founded by John Higgins. Over the past 10 years, John has grown the company from part-time gig renting out literally one RV and transformed it into a thriving business with three locations, more than 85 rental units, and $3 million in annual sales. This is yet another example of a business that started out as a side hustle, and over the period of a few years grew into a real business that now employs 20 people. In this video, I'm going to break down how Northwest Adventure Rentals got started, their marketing approach, and the steps required to start an RV rental business, if this is something you want to do on the side too. Ready? Let's do this. So for perspective, the RV and camper van rental industry is valued at more than $356 million in revenue per year in the US. This is also an industry that's experienced slow but steady growth of 3.3% annually since 2017. I even went out and rented my first camper a couple years ago before buying my own converted camper van. And I thought the RV rental service was really cool because it allowed me to test out if I wanted to actually do more camping in the future, especially when you've got a family with, with kids. Before making an investment on a rig, you want to make sure that they're going to actually sleep in the thing overnight and everybody's going to have a fun time. After the first experience, fortunately, my wife and kids discovered we really like camping and we decided to buy a converted van of our own the following summer. John started his RV rental business very humbly by renting out a camper trailer shown here. John just parked and stored the camper trailer in the front yard of their home. And if you wanted to buy a more up-to-date camper trailer like this today that's a lot more updated, you could find find something decent in the ballpark of 20,000 to 30,000. This is not a bad startup cost. And since it's a camper, you no doubt can get a loan and that you can just stick on the thing if you're not able to purchase the trailer outright. Now, John used a simple approach to find his first customer that wanted to rent out the trailer in the early days by listing the unit on Craigslist. John was blown away by the response from his single Craigslist ad and realized hey, this, there's a real business opportunity to build here. Based on the demand, John went out and invested in a second camper the following summer so they could expand their fleet further and make more money. In the early days of renting out RVs, this was a family affair. John enlisted his wife and kids to manage the leads coming in for the business while he remained employed as an engineer in a nine to five job. Family members pulled together to help run this business by restocking campers with paper plates, cutlery, towels, bedding, cleaning out the RVs after each rental, etc. In the first couple of years of the business, John recalls focusing on documenting the process for renting out an RV every time. And if you think about it, there's a lot of standard procedures that you've got to get straight if you really want to grow and expand your RV rental business. For example, you're going to need a checklist for cleaning out and replacing bedding in an RV after each rental. These things get dirty when they get, go out, no matter what happens. You'll need a system in place for collecting customer information. You'll need people's contact information, their license, insurance information from each customer too. You're also going to need to create a maintenance schedule once you start getting a fleet of these vehicles. Repairs are going to happen on campers. You also need to create a checklist for the customers when they come in and rent an RV. As you might expect, some of your customers, they've never driven a camper before. They don't. There's a little bit of a learning curve to doing it and understanding how to plug in the units for electricity, dumping the waste, getting water hooked up, or even just flipping on the TV sometimes can be a bit of a struggle. This is a crash course training process. You're going to need to walk through every customer that books an RV with you. If you've ever owned a camper, before too, you know accidents happen while you're out exploring this great big world that we live in. You know, it's super easy to back into a pole in a parking lot that you don't see, uh, or for a rock from a passing semi truck to kick up and leave a crack in your windshield. Both of those have happened to me. So you've got to make sure that you've got the appropriate insurance to cover these events when they happen to your customers, or at least make sure that your customers get that insurance before they rent it from you. Here's how John has found more rental 
RV customers. Like most entrepreneurs, John has tested all sorts of different ways to find customers. Here are a few of the marketing ideas that stand out. John attends RV and recreation shows. As people look at RVs for sale, they might decide, hey, let's just go rent one of these for the weekend instead of buying one here. John recommends attending events where you can bring an RV for people to take a tour of the inside. Instead of just sitting in a booth, you're gonna get a lot better results. Google ads are another consistent source of customers over the years but the advertising costs can get expensive and eat into your profits. So you don't wanna become 100% reliant on this source. Finally, you never wanna overlook the good old fashioned word of mouth advertising. A lot of customers have come from past clients telling their friends and family about the services. Uh, they also generate a lot of positive reviews on Google, which helps. One reason Northwest Adventure Rentals has been able to generate this positive word of mouth is that they differentiate their business from the other RV rental companies out there. Unlike other RV rental companies that charge all sorts of different fees for cleaning, mileage, and just the most creative charges I've ever seen in my life, these guys, they don't add any fees and they offer customers straightforward pricing, as somebody that's rented an RV in the past, I can really appreciate this differentiator because frankly, it can be really hard to figure out how much it's gonna cost to rent a vehicle on some of these other sites when you don't know what all the fees are gonna be coming into it. Next, if you wanna start an RV rental business like this one, things can be easier for you than it was for John when getting started about a decade ago. Today, there are all sorts of services like rvshare.com, for example, that allow you to rent out camper on their website, similar to the way that you might rent out a house or a condo on Airbnb or VRBO. The nice thing about listing your camper for rent on a website like RV Share is that they make handling the legal and the insurance steps a lot easier for you. They will also help you, of course, find customers to rent the unit, and they're gonna collect the payments for you. Of course, these websites do take a cut out of every booking, but I think especially in the early days, that is gonna be an expense that's well worth it. I think you could utilize these RV rental marketplaces in a smart way to just figure out the RV rental business, especially in your spare time. If you like the business model and you're able to make some money off of it, you know exactly how to grow the business because it's mainly just all about expanding your fleet from there and getting more customers. Eventually, John grew his RV rental business to six units and that's when he realized he needed to move out of the front yard and begin storing his units in a rented space away from his home. Long term, if you wanna expand and grow this business too, you're gonna need a place to park park all these RVs, especially during the winter time when things slow down and potentially during the week. If you live out in the country, you could probably get away with storing everything on your property a, you know, a lot longer than I could living in town. But just keep this in mind, because um, this is gonna be a problem you're gonna need to solve once you start scaling the business beyond one or two RV units. One final note, I love side hustles like this that you don't need to invest your entire life savings to start making a buck. John was able to run this business the first few years while keeping a steady paycheck and his health insurance, et cetera, while things got off the ground. I think you could do the same thing if you start looking at websites like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, in the winter months when no one else is looking for a camper, you might be able to get a real good deal on an investment trailer too and keep your startup costs a little bit lower. Additionally, if you decide that you don't like running an RV rental business, you've always got an out because you can always end up selling the trailer in the future and hopefully get back at least a good part of your initial investment if you buy used in the first place you should have a better chance of breaking even on the business idea and you know hey you could take it out yourself too if you like camping but that's just what I think about this business opportunity let me know what you think about the RV rental business in the comment section below I read and respond to pretty much every comment so let me know what you think and for more real business ideas that include revenue numbers just like this one don't forget to hit subscribe so you can get all the updates and we'll see you next time